This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Thousands of people are in the Circle City for Gen Con. We are live this morning with what you can expect before you head downtown for North America's largest gaming convention. Plus, the Call 6 investigation has lawmakers sounding off on your child's safety during severe weather. What they say needs to be done to protect your students. And after decades in business, a Carmel restaurant is closing up shop. The reason behind their closure and why they say other businesses may follow. It is 6 o'clock on your Thursday morning, the 1st of August. I'm Meredith Barrett. And I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is here with the good news. And for August, Todd, it's pretty comfortable out there. Yeah, you know, you think what they call the dog days of August because you talked about the heat, the humidity. Not the case here on August the 1st. But again, there's plenty more August to come, obviously, with today only being the first day. Uh, but we're really starting the first few days off of the month in great shape. So grab the sunglasses before you walk out the door this morning. You will need them from start to finish throughout the day today. You can kind of tuck that rain gear away until at least the middle of next week. And water is always a good thing uh, to drink. So here's the view from downtown to the north. As you look to the north, there is not a cloud in the sky here uh, this morning. And that's the way it's going to be throughout much of the morning. And then by this afternoon, we'll build in just a few fair weather clouds. 62 in Indy, 56 in Kokomo. Muncie, you're at 58 degrees. And here is the satellite radar picture. Some of you down to the south have a little bit of cloud cover this morning. But that will burn off very quickly now that the sun is coming up. So we'll see our temperatures climb to about 78 degrees degrees by the noon hour. High temperatures eventually later on this afternoon will be in the low 80s. The time now 601. It's also time for another look at traffic. Here's Lauren. All right, Todd. Here's a live look at I-70 a little east of the airport ramps. The airport may be a busy place today with all the Gen Con gamers coming into town and we want to welcome them and remind everyone that I-70 is going to be closed there as you get to I-465. So a little bit of an issue as you're trying to get to the downtown area from the airport this week. So we'll keep you updated on any delays. But right Right now everything is moving along up to speed in this area. Let's take a look at our map. At this hour we are monitoring just a few little slowdowns here on Keystone Avenue and Carmel. Again that closure on I-70 and then down in Edinburgh along northbound uh, I-65 as you get to US-31 there in Edinburgh. We do have some stop and go traffic so give yourself that extra time. Breaking overnight, a woman is in the hospital and police are looking for a suspect after a shooting on the far northeast side. This happened around 1.30 this morning in a neighborhood at East 33rd Street and Mitthofer Road. We're told a couple was flagged down by someone they knew who told them a woman had been shot several times. Police say she was taken to Eskenazi Hospital for treatment. Witnesses told officers the suspect was last seen driving northbound on Mitthofer. Game on! Gen Con is back in Indy. It's deemed as the largest and longest-running tabletop gaming event in the country. Our Aaron Lish is live at the Indiana Convention Center with what you can expect over the next four days. Now, Aaron, how many people typically show up to this event? Ah, oh, she's doing a disappearing act on me again, I see. <laughs> Yes, we are. So there's about 65,000 people that come to this. Right now, we are in Card Hall. And see all this? Our photographer, Eldon, and I actually put some of this together, put our skills. I'm pretty impressed with this. We have Stacia Kirby here with us from Gen Con. Tell us a little bit about this area here. Pretty neat. It is pretty neat. This is the 21st year we've done Card Hall. So what it is, it's an area where people come in and they can build huge uh, card displays. And then on Saturday night, people come, they stand... Up on the other side of this and they throw their coins and break down card holla and that money goes to charity. Yeah, I was just going to talk about the charities that you guys support. How much money have you guys given back to this community? Uh, since we've been in Indianapolis in 2003, we've given over $300,000 to uh, help raise that amount of money for different charities. Every year we do different charities. This year it's uh, Games to, Th to Grow and Special Olympics of Indiana. And this is really exciting. People can come out here starting today they just have to get their badges. Tell us a little bit about the badge process. Yeah, so the badges, everybody, to get inside the exhibit hall, you need a badge. Um, if you want to just be down in the open areas, of course, anybody can come down and see people costumed and whatnot. Um, you come down to the convention center, and you can, uh, the four-day badges are sold out on Saturday, but we still have today and Friday and Sunday open. All right, perfect. So come out here to Card Hall. I'm sure a lot of you guys still have Pokemon cards. You can donate them to this, and we'll have a little bit more in the next half hour.
Back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> All right, Aaron, thank you so much. Well, a call six investigation into your child's safety in the classroom is now prompting reaction from the state house. Our own Kara Kenny found that Indiana has no requirements in place to have tornado shelters in schools. Well, we found that several other states with rules requiring shelters in newly constructed schools include Illinois, Ohio, even Michigan. Adding a tornado shelter to a new building adds about 5% to the overall cost of that school. It also offers a lot more protection for students than just hunkering down in the hallway. Representative Randy Fry from Greensburg is on the House Public Safety Committee, and he says that lawmakers should have a conversation about tornado shelters in schools. Call 6 Investigates found that federal funding is available to bring such shelters here, but most schools don't apply for the money. I think it's something we need to look into, and I think it's also that we need to promote the fact that there are federal grant dollars out there for this, and schools can take advantage of it even without changing the code. Well, Fry says that requiring schools to include the storm shelters in newly constructed schools will cost money, so they need to figure out who's going to pay for it. He plans to reach out to the Indiana Department of Homeland Security for their input as well as Salem schools. We showed you as our investigation that Salem built a tornado safe room for Brady Shroom Elementary using federal grants. A 19 year old Bloomington man is accused of killing his girlfriend's two month old baby in a fit of rage. Police arrested Dakota King after the baby arrived at IU Health Bloomington hospital and died a short time later. Police say the baby had visible facial injuries. King later admitted he became angry with the baby because the child would not stop crying. He says he pushed the baby's head into a pillow in the bassinet to stop the crying. At 6.06, everything now back to normal this morning at Naval Support Activity Crane in southern Indiana. The installation was ordered to shelter in place after an unidentified device was found in the cafeteria of the pyrotechnics facility. The device was removed and taken in for testing. A crane spokesperson says this isn't unusual at the facility due to its age and the type of work that's performed formed there and all clear was given about an hour after that device was found. The United States federal court is warning residents someone is spoofing their phone number. Last week, people started reporting they had been contacted by someone claiming to be with the court. The caller claims your social security benefits have been hacked or you're under investigation for prostitution. If you might be a victim of the scam, you're urged to report it to the district court clerk's office at 317-229-3700. We also have all this information for you on the RTV6 app. At 607, yet another visit is closing its doors at a struggling local shopping center. This time it's a restaurant that has been a favorite for many central Indiana families for decades now. Our Alyssa Donovan is live at Hamilton Crossing up in Carmel this morning. And Alyssa, the owner of Mark Pie's China Gate, says he knows exactly when his business started to decline. That's right. He says he noticed his business and others starting to struggle when an exit off of US 31 was removed several years ago. Since then, business after business has closed its doors and his restaurant was one of the last few standing here at Hamilton Crossing. Now, Wing, Ming Wang rather is the owner of Mark Pie's Chinese restaurant, which has been a mainstay in central Indiana for more than 30 years. It's changed locations a few times and most recently it settled here at Hamilton Crossing for the last eight. When he moved in, his business was booming and the shopping center was full of tenants. But when an exit off of 31 that led to 126th Street was removed, shop after shop moved out. Wang says he believes the exit change, along with the construction of roundabouts in the area, have just made it way too challenging for customers to get to this shopping center. Some people can't even get in. You know, I get phone call all the time how to get in. Right. And some of my old customer coming from you know, south or, or, or north, they try to always figure out how to get in here. Now a spokesperson from Indiana Department of Transportation says that change to the exit off of 31 involved public process and that interchanges were added to other streets in the area with the intent to preserve access to roads that led to this shopping center. Now, Wang tells us that he does still have time left on his lease, but he is hoping to negotiate with his landlord to get out early because his business is struggling right now. We did reach out to Carmel to ask them their opinion on what's going on, and we have yet to hear back.
Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. It is 6.09. While Mark Pies may be closing, a new food choice is looking to open up in Hamilton County. Carmel is set to host Indiana's first Wahlburgers restaurant. This casual dining burger place and bar will be part of a development at Carmel Drive and Rangeline Road. It is set to open sometime next year. Actors Donnie and Mark Wahlberg and their brother, executive chef Paul Wahlberg, founded this restaurant and there are 25 Wahlburger restaurants all across the country. That sounds pretty good right now. It looks really good. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is another major interstate closure that you need to pay attention to. I-465 eastbound and northbound on the southeast side of the city are going to be closed for 15 days beginning August 9th. This closure stretches from I-65 to I-70 and will mostly impact Beach Grove drivers. Again, that begins August 9th and will go until August 24th. After Labor Day, the Indiana Department of Transportation will close the same stretch of highway going in the opposite direction. That will last until September 21st. Now we know this is a lot of information, so you can find it all and other road closures on the RTV6 app right now. It is 610, a nonprofit organization that serves senior citizens is one step closer to getting a precious commodity back. Earlier this month, police recovered a wheelchair accessible van stolen from Johnson County Senior Services after RTV6 reported on the theft. The van is used to take people to life-saving medical appointments. This week, more restoration cleaned it for free. For us as a not-for-profit, people literally die if we can't get them to life-saving treatment. So this is a priceless gift that they're giving us today. The cost of doing this and, and because of where it's going with the seniors, it was something our owner felt he wanted to get involved in and donate our time and, and get involved. Well, the van will still be out of service for a little while because it needs a new key system. Investigators believe that someone had been living in the van and still has those keys. Well, the Indiana State Fair kicks off its 17-day run tomorrow, which also happens to be RTV6 Day at the fair. RTV6 will be live from the fair throughout the day, starting right here on Good Morning Indiana. We're going to bring you the sights and sounds, not the smells there, of the opening day in real time, which includes band day. Join us for all the fun on Friday. The State Fair runs until August 18th, and we're going to have a perfect weather there for the State Fair in Todd. We had great weather last year, so we've just really lucked out on RTV6 Day. Yeah, we really have. Tomorrow is going to be very similar to today with low humidity, lots of sunshine, and temperatures that are going to be in the 80s. So a lot of times what I like to do with the first of the month is kind of give you the weather you can expect on average for, as for the month as a whole. So our average high today is 84 degrees. By the time we get to the end of the month, the average high is 83 degrees. So there's really not going to be much of a difference in our average high temperature as we work our way throughout the month. We average just over three inches of rainfall for the month and our average low is right around 64 degrees. Next month, September, that's when our average high temperatures really start to fall off. So here's where we're going today. The low to mid 80s in northern locations, 82 in Tipton, Logansport at 81. A little warmer to the south, 85 from Bedford over towards Seymour and then in and around the metro area, we're looking at high temperatures right around 83 degrees. Get out there and enjoy. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks. And our hiring Hoosiers career coach Coach, she is helping you to land your next job just after the break. What she says could give you the edge over the competition. Plus, if you're counting on a check from the Equifax data breach, you may not get it. After the break, what the Federal Trade Commission says you should do instead. That's why people feel more comfortable shopping at Meijer. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Time right now is 6.15 here on your Thursday. Here's a live look up to the northeast. I-69 and I-465, the ramp system there. You can see traffic is moving along up to speed. No crashes here to slow you down. Hiring Hoosiers is our initiative to help you find a new job or a better job and to help you be ready when you're looking for work. Today, our Hiring Hoosiers career coach says that knowing a second language can help give you an edge when it comes to landing that new job. What can you do to improve your English speaking skills so that you can find good work opportunities? For those of you who are new to the United States, remember this. You already have an edge because you're bilingual. Knowing more than one language is a wonderful asset to offer an employer. You don't have to be perfect. Trust your abilities. Be willing to stretch yourself. Next, build your English skills by signing up for free ESL literacy programs at your local library or adult education program. Here at Central 9, we have evening and day classes to suit your schedule. We have all levels from beginner to advanced. Students who advance to higher level classes are eligible for job trainings, 
special classes like OSHA, ServeSafe, QuickBooks, and CNA. The classes are all free of charge, and the great part is you can learn to read, speak, and write English while receiving valuable career coaching with our life coaches. This is a great way to learn while studying cultural differences with classmates from all over the world. Well, don't forget we have all of the tips from our career coaches, plus job listings and much more right now at HiringHoosiers.com. The Federal Trade Commission says so many people are asking for cash payments linked to the 2017 Equifax data breach. There may not be enough money for everyone. As part of a $300 million settlement announced last Monday, those impacted by the data breach were offered free credit monitoring or a check for up to $125. But the fund dedicated to the cash payouts only has $31 million. The FTC says the response has been so overwhelming, some people who are eligible may not get that $125. The FTC is suggesting people choose free credit monitoring rather than the check. At 617 new this morning, gamers are often victims of harassment, according to the Anti-Defamation League. The ADL says that nearly 74% of adults playing multiplayer games have experienced harassment in some form. Popular online games in the study include World of Warcraft, Minecraft, and Fortnite. Some players say that they've been bullied or targeted for their identity, including remarks about players' race and sexuality. The ADL says it didn't only find bad news, though. 88% of the gamers report positive experiences while playing games online, including helping others and making new friends. A bill now in the Senate aims to fight social media addiction. The Social Media Addiction Reduction Technology Act was introduced earlier this week. It would ban practices frequently used by top social networking sites to keep users engaged, like YouTube's autoplay or Snapchat snap streaks. The bill gives social media companies three months to end its practices. It would also require the creation of time limit setting features. The measure joins a string of bills introduced in recent months targeting Silicon Valley. Well, Todd, I'd have to say today would be a great day to ditch the phone, leave it right. at home, and get outdoors. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yesterday I got my lawn cut, I went for a run, and it was you know warm when you're out there, but it's not terrible. The humidity is low, and today's one of those days again where the humidity is low and temperatures will be climbing up into the 80s. Our average high is 84, today going up to 83. So it's a seasonable day for us. And look at all this sunshine starting to appear as you look from downtown to the north past the Riley Towers, I-65, and eventually all the way up there through Hamilton County. We'll enjoy the sunshine here from start to finish throughout the day today. 62 degrees, that is the current temperature, the dew points in the mid 50s, so it's still very, very comfortable. And actual temperatures are in the 50s in a lot of northern locations from Muncie to Tipton at 58 degrees, 55 in Lafayette, Greencastle at 56 degrees. As you work your way down to the Bloomington area, your temperature's at 61. So it's another great start to our day. Uh, one where you hopefully opened the windows last night where you, before you went to bed and gave that air conditioner a little bit of a break. Any high thin cloud cover that is out there will burn off very, very quickly. Some storms near Kansas City just off the screen there, they are diving down to the south, so you do not have to worry about those, but you do notice one little downpour south of Columbus there, and there is a little disturbance off to our east, and it's not out of the question that an isolated shower or two could sneak in, actually working backwards from east to west into central Indiana. So from Richmond to Greensburg, I'll put in the chance of a stray shower, but 99% of us remain completely dry throughout the day today, and you can enjoy the sunshine. You'll just notice a little more in the way of cloud cover building in throughout the afternoon hour. So your Thursday starts off mostly sunny, ends partly cloudy. Temperatures in the low 80s across the area. The wind remains nice and light. And even this evening, temperatures will be very comfortable as we fall through the 70s. And eventually tomorrow morning, once again, about 55 to 62 degrees across the area. It's another great night for sleeping. And then throughout the day tomorrow, as the Indiana State Fair kicks off, we're talking about temperatures a little bit warmer, climbing up into the mid 80s across the area. And then looking ahead to the weekend, we're into the upper 80s. So we do start to heat back up. The humidity will come up a little bit as well. You'll notice it on Saturday and Sunday, but it's not going to be that super oppressive humidity that we dealt with uh, during July.
July and then those that one weekend. So uh, not bad here in this forecast. The only real flaw is we could use some rainfall across the area. We don't have any in the forecast until Wednesday. And even then, we're looking at just some spotty storms. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a live look right now. Down on the south side of town, I-465 at the Harding Street exit, State Road 37. Now this area looking pretty busy already at this early hour. It's part of that detour route, so no one can take I-70. So they're coming around here on the south side. Plus, we have the normal south side traffic. So just expect a few delays as we get closer to the rush hour. It looks like it's already getting pretty busy down there. Let's take a look at our map at this hour. Planning out your commute on the south side as you're traveling northbound on State Road 37 from Smith Valley Road in Greenwood to I-465. It's a nine-minute drive, no delays, and then over here on northbound I-65 from County Line Road to I-70 at the north split, a 12-minute commute, so no crashes, no delays there to slow you down. Well, are you a fan of mustard? Just after the break, why this dessert could be right up your alley. Mm. Mm, I don't know about that. No. <laughs> a Carmel restaurant is the latest to close up shop. Ahead at 6.30, the reason the owner says all of the businesses in the area are struggling. Injured people committed to be the best. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. It is 625 here and let's take a live look at traffic in the downtown area. I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. Everything's moving smoothly for your commute. No issues here. It's not uncommon to be greeted by flight attendants when you board a plane, but they're usually standing in the aisle but not on this flight from Nashville. Passengers on a Southwest flight were surprised to be greeted by a flight attendant hanging out in the overhead luggage bin. They say she was in there for about five minutes and didn't get down until more than half the airplane was boarded. So next time, if you wonder if an overhead bin will hold your luggage, <laughs> remember, probably so if it is smaller than that flight attendant. Interesting. That is. Well, you'd be forgiven for not having explicit plans for National Mustard Day, but French's wants to make sure that you know it's on Saturday. That's why the America's largest mustard manufacturer made this. Yeah, you are, your eyes are not deceiving you. That is mustard flavored ice cream. The company teamed up with the ice cream company Cool House to create this bizarre flavor. Some of the staff at People Magazine got a sneak preview of it and they report it's not as dreadful as you might think. They described tasting cotton candy and bubblegum ice cream before the mustard flavor hits you. I kind jokingly said thing. to my mom yesterday, I said, would you put chunks of hot dog on top of it? Oh. Like, I, don't know. I, oh, I like mustard, but I don't think I could do I that. Oh. I love mustard. I put that on everything. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Ice By cream. Itself. Eh. I'd eat. try it though. I'd give it a whirl. All right. Yeah. Send us some. <laughs> cool All right. All right. Outside right now. It's another comfortable morning. Beautiful out there with plenty of sunshine, low humidity, and temperatures that are in the 50s and 60s. We'll be up to about 77 degrees here by the noon hour with skies that'll be mostly sunny. And then as we transition into the afternoon, afternoon and day. Very similar to yesterday. Low to 80s across most of the area. A little warmer to the south. Bloomington, Columbus right about 85 degrees. But skies will be mostly sunny. So get out there and enjoy. A woman is recovering after a shooting on the city's far northeast side. Ahead on Good Morning Indiana, what police say led up to that gunfire. And a live look right now at traffic peaking up through Fishers, I-69 near 96th Street. Traffic here is moving along up to speed. No crashes around the metro area at this hour. Stay with us. We'll have more news, weather, and traffic just after the break. At Ross, yes for less. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now at 6.30, gunfire on the far northeast side. We'll show you how the scene unfolded and what police know so far. And a business closes and the owner says it's because of road construction. We'll show you how this isn't the first time a business has closed because of this road work either. Whenever tens of thousands descend on downtown, that usually means it's time for Gen Con. We're live this morning with what you can expect before you head to North America's largest gaming convention. And it is 6.30 if you're in town for Gen Con. We want to Welcome you here to the Circle City. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Thanks for waking up early with us. The good news is, Todd, all those people who flew in here to Indy, they've got some great <laughs> right. weather. They're, they're, they're going to enjoy themselves, yeah. right? Because we have another great weekend. Ever since uh, the second to last weekend in June, all our weekends have been really, really nice here across the area for the most part. And this one's going to be another one. We'll have lots of sunshine and temperatures 
in the 80s this morning as you walk out the door. Here is the view if you are looking off uh, towards the northwest and you can see that well, there's some high thin clouds there off in the distance, but uh, those will burn off really, really quick once the sun gets higher above the horizon. And for the most part, skies are mainly clear. And look at these temperatures. We are down into the 50s once again in almost all northern locations, 55 in Lafayette, 52 Crawfordsville, 58 in Muncie, 61 is the current temperature in Bloomington with the clear skies. We'll enjoy a sun-filled day from start to finish. A walk on the canal downtown Indianapolis be a great place to be later on today. 78 by the noon hour on our way up to a high temperature today of 83 degrees. The time now is 631. Let's get a look at traffic here on this Thursday morning. All right, Todd, thanks. Right now, no crashes to report around the metro area, so that is great news. Let's take a look at some drive times on I-74. Traveling westbound, a five-minute commute from Acton Road to the I-465 ramp system. And then over here to the east side as you're traveling westbound on I-70 from Post Road to I-65 at the north split. No delays, a 10-minute commute for you. Let's take a look across town. This is I-70 just west of the airport ramps. As we've been saying, a lot of people heading into town today for Gen Con. So I-70 over here by the airport may be a little bit busier than normal. Plus, you'll need to get off the interstate at I-465 and take that around the south side. Now to breaking news. We've been following from overnight a woman in the hospital and police are now looking for a suspect after a shooting on the far northeast side. This happened around 1.30 this morning in a neighborhood at East 33rd Street and Midhoffer Road. We're told that a couple was flagged down by someone they knew who told them that a woman had been shot several times. Police say she was taken to Eskenazi Hospital for treatment. Witnesses told officers the suspect was last seen driving northbound on Mithoffer Road. Well, a struggling local shopping center is losing yet another tenant. This time it's a restaurant that's been serving central Indiana families for decades. Our Alyssa Donovan is live at Hamilton Crossing in Carmel this morning. Alyssa, the owner of Mark Pie's Chinese restaurant says he can pinpoint exactly when his business took a downturn. That's right, Meredith. He says it all started with the removal of an exit off of US 31 that used to help his patrons and other customers get to the businesses right in this shopping center. That happened about five years ago. And since then, this area has become a bit of a ghost town and his restaurant is one of the last few tenants left here. Now, the owner, Ming Wang, says it's just not worth it anymore to keep the restaurant going. He says it's not getting good foot traffic it once had. Mark Pai's Chinese Gate has been in central Indiana for more than 30 years. It's changed locations a few times, but it's been here at Hamilton Crossing for the last eight. When he moved to this location, business was great at first and the shopping center was full of tenants. But when an exit off of 31 that led to 126th Street was removed, shop after shop started closing. Now, Wang says he believes the exit change, along with the roundabouts that have been constructed across the city of Carmel, have made it too challenging for customers to get to this shopping center. Some people can't even get in. You know, I get phone call all the time how to get in. Right. And some of my old customer coming from, you know, south or, or, or north, they try to always figure out how to get in here. A spokesman from Indiana Department of Transportation says that change to the exit off of 31 involved public process and that interchanges were added to other streets in the area with the intent to preserve access to roads that led to this shopping center. Now, RTV6 also reached out to the city of Carmel to find out why they believe that this shopping center is struggling to keep tenants. We have yet to hear back. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. In most cases, surveillance video is released to help catch the criminals. Well, in this case, a man caught on camera is considered a hero. Janan Stewart of Brownsburg hopes you recognize this good Samaritan so she can thank him. She says the man in this video saw her home burning and knocked on the front door to alert the family while calling 911. Well, everyone inside made it out safely. The Brownsburg Fire Department says the fire started in the home's AC condenser unit. The Muncie Police Chief tells Call 6 Investigates the department is taking steps to prevent future violations. That's because a state police review ruled that officers misused equipment. State police say Muncie officers used their computers to look up information about a man who has been critical of city government. The chief sent an internal memo to all officers reminding them of appropriate use of the law enforcement record system known as IDAX. I think in these couple situations, um, they were trying to get information on someone that 
uh, in that situation, they shouldn't have been. Uh, there was no crime involved. They weren't investigating a crime, and uh, these people have the right to not have this done to them. We certainly realize that we were wrong, and, and we've, uh, we think we've fixed this issue and should never happen again. The notice of violation is among the lowest reprimands a police department can receive in this situation. State police say they had two violations last year. They say these kinds of incidents are not common. We are learning more about a program that will help people in food deserts get to grocery stores. This week we told you the Lyft Access, the Lyft Grocery Access program rather, will take people to and from six groceries and supermarkets for just $2. Since then we've learned that families can sign up by downloading the Lyft app and putting their address in to verify that they live within those eligible boundaries. The program will then pop up as an option. We spoke with neighbors who are excited about the service. I think it was real nice. Um, you know, it was $2, who can, can't beat that, can't beat that at all. Just a lot of people in here that really don't walk like I do, that's, you know, on disability, and uh, that would help them out a lot. The program has faced criticism from some community activists. They argue the city should do more to keep and attract grocery stores in that neighborhood. It is 637, Monopoly, Sorry, Candyland, just a few th games that many of us grew up playing as children. But this week is a whole new ball game. With thousands of unique tabletop games, gamers are descending upon Indy to buy and play them at Gen Con. Our Erin Lish is live at the Indiana Convention Center, getting us ready for the four-day spectacle. Erin, this convention is about as big as they get. You're lucky to be in there now because it's awfully quiet. That's about to change, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's gonna get absolutely packed in here. About 65,000 people come to this. This is pretty neat. I didn't make this one. This is Card Hollow. This is one of the things that you're gonna see here. 19,000 different events over 500 different vendors here and we actually have Missy here with us from Visit Indy. Tell us a little bit about how much of an impact this makes just in the city of Indianapolis. Yes, that's over 70 million dollars in economic impact here for the city and the surrounding area. Like you said, 65,000 people here. That's a huge impact. Um, they're staying in our hotels, eating at our restaurants all over the central Indiana area. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Actually, some of those gamers are going to be in the local area hotels playing those games for 24 hours very exciting time for all of them and something else on Georgia Street you guys have a lot going on out there right we have 90 different vendors out there over the next five days a lot of those are local businesses food trucks our local breweries we have the official beer of Sun of Gen Con which is Sun, Con, Sun King Brewing and um, plenty of vendors out there lots of excitement this week all right perfect so if you guys want to come out here things start at 10 o'clock this morning you just have to go out and and buy your badge, you can get that online or here. A lot of fun games. You're gonna see some that you've never seen before. There's people already coming here this morning to get ready for the big event. We're gonna send it over to you, Todd. All right, thanks, Aaron. And they'll have great weather for Gen Con today and all the way through uh, this entire weekend. So if you're heading out the door this morning to walk the dog, uh, you will be walking out to very comfortable conditions. Our featured dog of the day is Sam and Lila sent in here um, by a man they're just sitting there in the sunshine ready to go for their walk and that's the view they'll have uh, later on today with the sunny skies from start to finish and of course if you'd like your dogs featured you can send your pictures to me on my Facebook page Todd Clausen RTV6 and here is that sunshine for the day today starting off around 60 degrees at 7 a.m. going up to 83 by 4 p.m. so we'll give you the green pause and then going forward in this forecast I mentioned the dry conditions it's tomorrow all the way through the weekend and into next week and no chance of rain. It's probably not until Wednesday next week that we get into those rain chances, but we'll talk more about the opening day at the State Fair tomorrow and the weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Well, if you are counting on a check from that Equifax data breach, you may not get it. Just after the break, what the Federal Trade Commission says you should do instead. And it's almost State Fair time. That means visits to a historic building that will soon be coming down. Just ahead, it's Throwback Thursday, and we take a look back at the iconic Swine Barn. It's 6.40. We'll see you here after the break. Comcast Business, beyond fast. 
Welcome back. The Federal Trade Commission says so many people are asking for cash payments linked to the 2017 Equifax data breach. There may not be enough money for everyone. As part of a $300 million settlement announced last Monday, those impacted by the data breach were offered free credit monitoring or a check for up to $125. But the fund dedicated to the cash payout only has $31 million. The FTC says the response has been so overwhelming, some people who are eligible may not get the full $125. The FTC is suggesting people choose free credit monitoring rather than the check. At 6.43, the second Democratic presidential debate this week was largely a contest to see whether anyone could make a dent in the top two polling candidates on stage. There were more battles between frontrunner Joe Biden and the woman who gained ground after last round of debates, California Senator Kamala Harris. Other candidates on stage tried their best to have a breakthrough moment. The next Democratic debates will likely include far fewer candidates due to the higher thresholds in polling and fundraising that are needed to qualify. All right, here at 6.43, we do want to talk about the forecast today. All the people coming in town for Gen Con probably think, man, Indiana summer. Beautiful. Not humid, <laughs> really nice. We'll go with it. Hey, yeah. Todd. Yeah, you know, it's not always like this. You know, they came a <laughs> few weekends ago. We had those triple digit heat index values. Uh, but since then, we've really been in this nice air mass, and it's going to continue for the most part into the weekend. So it's another great day for us today with sunny skies and low humidity across the area. And the forecast is very, very dry. So that's the one flaw probably in the forecast is that we don't have any rain really heading our way until the middle of next week. At least that's the next best chance of seeing some thunderstorms roll into the area. With that said, though, we'll enjoy the low humidity and the sunshine as you look here uh, across the campus of uh, IUPUI and uh, Lilly Campus there. This is actually off towards the southeast as you look through Fountain Square. Uh, you can see just some high thin clouds off in the, the distance there. 62 degrees, that's the current temperature. Just a light wind out of the north. But again, it's the wind direction that's making all the difference uh, here in our forecast. Yesterday, it was out of the north. Today, it's out of the north, and that's helping to keep the humidity down and that will be the case throughout the day today. So look at some of these temperatures. 59 in Columbus, 52 in Crawfordsville, 55 as you make your way into Lafayette. Muncie's at 58 degrees in Richmond, you're at 61. So it's a very, very comfortable morning. Maybe some of you need a little bit of a light jacket, uh, but you'll be able to shed that pretty quickly in the next few hours as these temperatures will warm really, really quickly. So you see some clouds speckled here across the map. They kind of jump around and they're burning off now. Now that the sun is doing its magic and as far as rain chances go, there are a few showers in Illinois just kind of flaring up. There's weak little disturbance across Ohio and it's probably just close enough that we'll have to maintain maybe a very, very small rain chance here in far eastern Indiana uh, later on this afternoon as a shower or two could drift in from Ohio into, say, the Richmond area down towards Batesville to the Greensburg and that's just about it. Most of us remain completely dry throughout the day today. You'll just notice skies going from mostly sunny to partly cloudy as we work our way into the afternoon hour. So your hour by hour temperatures here, we're in to the upper 70s to near 80 degrees already by the noon hour. Then we'll get up to right around 83 for your afternoon highs. That's very seasonable, so it's a pleasant day for us. And this evening, if you're heading to the zoo, animals and all that jazz, a great show uh, that they always have there throughout the summer months, falling from the 80s into the 70s. The animals, I'm sure loving this weather at the zoo. Uh, so that would be a perfect night for you. And then overnight tonight, back into the 50s and 60s. It's nice and comfortable for you all across the area. And then tomorrow, we just do it all over again. Kind of a broken record in the forecast here. The one little change you'll notice tomorrow is the humidity does come up a smidge. And also the actual temperatures come up just a little bit. And that trend continues into the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, 87 degrees. Skies will be mostly sunny. And then we stay in the mid 80s next week with dry conditions Monday and Tuesday. And then there's those isolated storm chances in the forecast on Wednesday. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at our traffic now maps. Now, the good news right now for your Thursday, no crashes to report around the metro area. But again, we have this closure on I-70. So as we have people coming into town and leaving town throughout the weekend at the airport, we're going to expect some heavy traffic on the south side. 465 and I-65, that is the detour route to get around this closure. And let's take a live look right now down on the south side. Traffic already heavier for this time of the morning but it's still moving along about up to speed. Just a stalled vehicle there. You can see off the distance on the right side, but overall no major issues. We'll continue to keep a close eye on things though and keep you updated. <laughs> Hey, 
it is that time of the week once again where we dive into the vaults here at RTV6 and we take a look back into the past. This week's Throwback Thursday is right in line with the start of the state fair. We're headed into the swine barn where animals are proving they are more than a hearty meal. Former RTV6 reporter Reed Duffy attended the world's largest male hog contest, an event even grabbing the attention of Good Morning America. Duffy followed Elwood farmer Harold McDermott, whose hogs, Funk and Junior, were up for the <laughs> crown against a hog from Fortville. Funk would bring home second place, but it's Junior who captured the crowd's attention. Thus leaving it to Junior to bring the largest hog ribbon back to the McDermott farm for the second year in a row. The five-year-old Junior trained all winter for this contest, working out with the feed bag several hours a day, and his diligence paid off. A runaway champion, 1,150 pounds, in a class by himself, and worthy of the name Macho. Oh, a little... I like it. Well, last month, <laughs> fair officials announced the swine barn you see in this video will be torn down following next year's state fair. The $50 million multi-use facility will be built in its place. Oh, Junior, I hope you stay cool out there. You can see <laughs> more of the story right now on the IndyChannel.com slash history. That's where you can also find all of our other Throwback Thursday stories. Well, the Indiana State Fair kicks off its 17-day run tomorrow, which also happens to be RTV6 Day at the Fair. RTV6 will be live from the fair throughout the day, starting right here on Good Morning Indiana. We're going to be bringing you the sights and the sounds of opening day in real time, which includes band day. So you can join us for all the fun. That's tomorrow. The State Fair runs until August 18th. Looking forward to seeing you out there. Mm -hmm. We hope you're hungry. The burger joint with some very famous owners is coming to central Indiana. Up next on RTV6, where you will soon get to sit down and enjoy a wall burger. That's next. Airing Hoosiers, only on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. It is 6.52. I'm Meredith Barrett. And I'm Lauren Casey. And we are working for you on this Thursday morning, helping you to get your day started. We have your top stories covered, and we're keeping a close eye on traffic. We do want to start off with Todd Clawson and your morning forecast on this first day of August. Yeah, beautiful start to the month. If we just keep the days like this throughout the entire month, we'd be in great shape. Low humidity this morning and temperatures that are in the 50s and 60s and skies uh, that are clear. And we'll enjoy sunshine here throughout the course of the entire morning will climb from the 50s to about 70 degrees by 10 a.m. So we do warm quite quickly across the area and then we'll take that 70 and tack on about 13 more degrees for your high temperature later on this afternoon getting up to 83 in Indy 82 in Peru. High temperatures from Bloomington to Columbus today will be at 85. Get out there and enjoy this great Thursday. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Now to breaking news from overnight. A woman is in the hospital and police are looking for a suspect after a shooting on the far northeast side. This all happened around 1.30 this morning in a neighborhood on East 33rd Street and Mitthofer Road. A couple was flagged down by someone they knew who told them that a woman had been shot several times. Police say the woman was taken to the hospital for treatment. Witnesses told the officers the suspect was last seen driving northbound on Mitthofer Road. A 19-year-old Bloomington man is accused of killing his girlfriend's two-month-old baby in a fit of rage. Police arrested Dakota King after the baby died at the hospital. King admitted he became angry with the baby because the child would not stop crying. He says he pushed the baby's head into a pillow in the bassinet to stop the crying. Alyssa. Hamilton Crossing Shopping Center here in Carmel is losing yet another tenant. Mark Pye's China Gate restaurant is closing its doors. The restaurant is one of the few tenants left in the area. We spoke with the owner and he says he noticed the downturn in business when an exit off of US 31 was removed several years ago. He often receives phone calls from longtime customers trying to figure out the best way to get here. The owner says he served Hoosiers for decades, changing locations throughout the years. This location has been the restaurant's downfall. The area has lost several businesses. We have reached out to the city of Carmel to find out why they think businesses are struggling here. We have yet to hear back. Good morning. We are here at the Indiana Convention Center in the Card Hall section getting ready for all of these gamers for this year's Gen Con. It's deemed the largest and longest running tabletop gaming convention in the entire United States. Gen Con 2019 will have more than 19,000 events taking place over this four day convention and has an exhibit hall filled with more than 520 exhibitors. It opens today and runs through the fourth with doors opening for the exhibit hall at 10 o'clock this morning 
morning. There's a 24 hour gaming time taking place here at Lucas Oil and also area hotels. Remember, if you do come, you'll need to buy a badge. You can get those online or here at the convention center. Aaron, thank you. Indiana's first Wahlburgers restaurant will be built in Carmel. The casual dining burger place and bar will be part of a development at Carmel Drive and Rangeline Road. It's set to open sometime next year. Actors Donnie and Malk Wahlberg and their brother, executive chef Paul Wahlberg, founded the restaurant. There are 25 Wahlburger restaurants across the country. A nonprofit organization that serves senior citizens is one step closer to getting a precious commodity back. Earlier this month, police recovered a wheelchair accessible van stolen from John and County Senior Services after RTV6 reported on the theft. The van is used to take people to life-saving medical appointments. This week, more restoration cleaned it for free. The van will still be out of service for a while because it needs a new key system. More interstate closures are coming to the Circle City. Northbound and eastbound lanes from I-465 from I-65 to I-70 will close August 9th and stay closed through August 24th. After Labor Day, the Indiana Department of Transportation will close the same stretch of highway going in the opposite direction. That will last until September 21st. We do know that is a lot of information. You can find everything on the latest road work closures on the RTV6 app. And let's take a look at the interstates right now. This is on the southwest side, I-465 and Man Road. Part of that detour route as I-70 is closed, heading between downtown and the west side. A stalled semi there in the shoulder, but overall everything is traveling up to speed. Heavier traffic expected here on the south side, so just give yourself that extra time. Todd? And Lauren, it's a beautiful forecast for us as we go forward throughout the course of the afternoon hours today. We're looking at temperatures that'll be climbing up into the 80s. And here is a look at your seven day planning forecast. The theme in the 80s will continue the next seven days. We're talking mainly mid to upper 80s though after today. The humidity will come up a little bit as well as we work our way into the weekend. But all in all, not bad for the first week of August. All right, Todd, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us. We're gonna be back right here in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America with news, weather and traffic updates. And remember all your news throughout the day can be found on the RTV6 app. Thanks for watching Good Morning Indiana. Have a great Thursday.